Hey friend, welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we'll be answering the question, what is noise shaping? We'll be looking into the practices that make noise shaping possible and the fields of study that help us to better understand noise shaping. So stick around for the full video, but first, if this is a topic you find interesting, I'd highly recommend looking into the blog post that's associated with this video. In it, you'll find a lot more information on this topic. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer or producer and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of that mix. All you have to do is set up the short account, upload the song, and we will do the rest. So, what is noise shaping? Noise shaping is the combination of dithering and equalization used to both cover quantization noise and push any noise created by dithering into less perceivable areas of the frequency spectrum. With the use of noise shaping, dithering can be applied while theoretically reducing the overall perceivable noise floor. But how does noise shaping do this? How can it reduce the perceived noise floor? Well, first let's look into how we perceive music. We can find our answer by looking into something called the Fletcher-Munson curve. The Fletcher-Munson curve, also known as the equal loudness contour, is the measurement of the sound pressure needed to create an equally perceived loudness across the full frequency spectrum. The Fletcher-Munson curve demonstrates how our ears affect our perception of sound sources in a unique manner. So why is this important? Well, it shows that our ears do not translate sounds in a linear fashion. In other words, the sound that goes in isn't always the sound that is perceived. This effect can be used when introducing dithering noise. By using noise shaping or equalizing the white noise used for dithering and attenuating sounds that are easier to hear while amplifying those that are harder to hear, Dithering can be applied to the same degree it normally would, but it will be harder to perceive. With that in mind, let's look at some of the different noise shaping types you may have already seen and briefly discuss the shaping that's occurring. The first one is POWR number one. Typically, flat dither has a flat frequency response, and this means that no noise shaping has been applied to the dithering noise. However, in this particular algorithm, some noise shaping has been applied above 15 kilohertz. POWR number 2 is attenuated from 2 kHz to 8 kHz. At 8 kHz, the noise is amplified roughly 15 dB between 8 kHz and 14 kHz. There's an additional 5 dB amplified between 16 kHz and 20 kHz. POWR number 3 is attenuated drastically around between 3 kHz and 4 kHz and then gradually amplified back to unity between 5 kHz and 9 kHz. It dips again between 12 kHz and 14 kHz, and then is amplified drastically between 16 kHz and 20 kHz by roughly 35 dB. This algorithm is a bit more extreme in its equalization curve or noise shaping and may result in more perceived noise despite its intention to do the opposite. UV22HR was created by Apogee and is relatively flat between 1 kHz and 18 kHz, although it should be noted that these frequencies are quieter than a flat dither by roughly 5 dB. At 18 kHz, the noise is amplified drastically by about 30 decibels. FabFilter Basic is relatively flat until 7 kHz. From 7 kHz to 20 kHz, the noise is gradually amplified by 10 dB. FabFilter Optimized is flat until 3 kHz. From 3 kHz to 7 kHz, the amplitude is increased gradually by 10 dB. From 7 kHz to 14 kHz, it's flat again, at which point the amplitude increases drastically by 25 dB until reaching 20 kHz. Now FabFilter Weighted remains flat until 6 kHz. From 6 kHz to 10 kHz, the amplitude is increased by 10 dB. From 11 kHz to 14 kHz, it dips by 5 dB, and at 14 kHz to 20 kHz, it increases in gain by 30 dB. Lastly, Waves IDR Type 1 Ultra stays flat until about 10 kHz, at which point it quickly and exponentially slopes upward by 40 dB until it reaches 20 kHz. As you can see, different dithering and noise shaping types accentuate and attenuate different frequencies. Each type may work better for a specific master and depends on the instrumentation used in the mix as well as some other factors. So, what do you think? Has this video been helpful? If so, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, again, definitely check out the blog post where you can find even more information on noise shaping as well as a video detailing how to make your own dithering and noise shaping. 
Follow the link in the description to find that. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. All you have to do is set up this super easy to create account, upload the song, and we'll do the rest. But thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share this video with your friends. Also, you can subscribe to the channel. That way you stay up to date on all of our latest releases. There's a comment section where you can leave your thoughts on this video or a suggestion for a future video. And again, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.